Hi, you are watching the Pearl Maven TV show. My name is Gabor Sabo, and with me here is uh, Tadeusz Sosniez. I, yes, I hope to pronounce his name. Uh, it's Sosniez. Sosniez. Okay. Yes, perfect. Oh, this is perfect. This is the best thing I've heard. <laughs> oh, great. Thank you. Um, maybe I learn Polish one day. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, Tadzik, right? Yep, Tadzik. that's the IRC nickname. How do, you, how do you say your nickname? Tajik. Tajik. Okay. So, his name, <laughs> so your your nickname is is is, is Tajik, and uh, it's, he, it's just a short from the full name. Okay. Anyway, uh, welcome to the show. Uh, I'm happy you're here. Um, let's start with the standard question: That uh, how did you get involved in Pearl? Oh, well, I I thought about this really, and I can't really remember what really drove me. To Perl specifically, but I remember that back in the days when I didn't really know anything about, uh, aside from the C, the C programming language, I thought, hey, it would be cool to know C and Perl. I don't know why I picked Perl really, but I thought it would be a nice thing to know, and I started learning it, and I started looking for some Polish community. I'm from Poland, and I started looking for some, you know, the forum on the internet or the Polish website of Perl, something of this sort, and I didn't really find anything. I didn't know of things like permongers groups or mailing lists or whatever, so I thought, oh, th there must be no Perl community in Poland at all, what a shame. But uh, a couple of months later, I think, uh, some two guys did a, a talk on the Warsaw Linux users group on the modern Perl, and apparently they came from some Warsaw PM group and had a mailing list and monthly meetings in a bar, and this part I understood, so I started attending those and starting to get involved, and. That's sort of how it started. So, so it's Pearl and the bar. Yep. <laughs> uh, when was it? I mean, I met you two years ago, I think, in in mm -hmm. Riga, right? How long yes. have you been? How long have you been involved in? in Pearl? I think I've been programming in Pearl for like five years now. Mm -hmm. I started just before my studies and started being involved with Pearl Six about a year later. And okay. this is the moment when I started contributing anything. So you would do both per five and per six? Well, I do mostly per five as my job these days, and mm -hmm. per six in my spare time, the one that I can allocate somehow, but my most of my contributions are per six, yes. Okay, so tell me about this. I mean, I understood that you're, um, you're still a student or you're a uh, full-time yes, employee now? I'm trying to finish my bachelor, is that the word? Okay. Degree in this year, and well, I'm working half-time and yeah, I hope to finish my studies at least in the upcoming two years or so. Okay, so what kind of things do you do, you do is uh, a job, a job? Well, I'm, I'm working on Opera software, working mm. with Perl. This is mostly web, web, um, web service things these days. Okay, does that, does that mean that they have an office there or do you work remotely? Or? Uh, there is an office in Warsaw. They have offices like uh, Norway, Sweden, two of those in Poland. And, I started working there like a year ago, and I got this job uh, thanks to the uh, people I knew and from Warsaw PM, the Perlmongers group. Yeah, yeah. I always want. I'm looking for these these uh, mm -hmm. explanations why it's important to to be involved in the in the in the user group. And here's uh, an example: you can find jobs there, right? <laughs> That's a good example indeed. <laughs> yeah. So. Let's talk about Perl 6, because probably mm -hmm. that's more, I mean, you're involved in Perl 6, in the development of Perl 6, right? That's correct. What kind of things do you do there? Well, I, the, probably the most significant thing I did was the Google Summer of Code. It was uh, two or three years ago, I don't remember, around the Riga conference, so two years ago. And uh, for Summer of Code, I implemented the pod parsing for the Rakuda compiler, because uh, there's a different pod in Perl 5 and in Perl 6. In Perl 5, it's just a separate part, sort of a... It's not, it doesn't really... It's not a syntactic part of Perl 5 itself. Yeah, it's just completely separate. It's not parsed. It's not processed by the compiler. It's and in Perl 6... Language. Yeah. Yes, yes. Well, but what I mean is that it's like a comment. Yeah? Yeah, it's, okay. It doesn't really have any effect on the code whatsoever. And in Perl 6, it's the part of the language. It's parsed by the Perl 6 parser. The documentation is attached to objects. You can introspect it and whatever. So, so you don't you don't need an external 
parser for pod? No, no. I, it would be really hard uh, to write one because it's not just just pod is part of per six, but also, uh, for example, configuration of some pod blocks is written in Perl six using Perl six syntax. So it's really those two parts interact together. It's not just a pod parser that's a part of Perl six parser, but it's also the other way around. So it can't really be done easily as a separate tool. Okay. And where does this stand now? So you, you did this project, the sum, Google, Google Summer Code? Yep. Has that in, does it finish the implementation of everything that, that's about pod in, in Perl 6, or uh, is there more work? It's still not really covering the entire specification. It's doing most of it. I Occasionally fixing some things there, but I didn't really push the development forward since the end of the Summer of Code. These days I'm more, mostly involved in the model management, the model installers, the module ecosystem, all those things. Basically CPAN, right? Well, sort of, yes. The Perl 6 CPAN, yeah. How does it work? Well, uh, <laughs> when I started the Perl 6 development, being involved with Perl 6, the thing is that, uh, actually, let's come back a bit to the starting with Perl part, because when I started programming Perl 5, it was like, Perl 5 had everything already. It had CPAN, CPAN testers, all those things. It, Everything that you could possibly think of, almost everything was already there. Yeah, CPAN was there, uh, all the modules you could think of were there, and even if you wanted to contribute somehow, it was hard to find something that's not already done by somebody else. Well, you could write another uh, module for, I don't know, templating system? Well, yeah, you could write like 51st web framework or something like this. Yeah. And, and in Perl 6 it was different in, uh, in a way that it almost had nothing back then. It yeah. still has some little things now, but uh, when I started working with it, there was like 20 or 30 modules at all. No okay. working module installer at all. How and many are there now? Uh, about 100, more than 100. 100 modules, okay. Yeah, nice. Something like this. And so one of the first things I wrote in Pro 6 was the module installer, because I noticed that none of them are really working. There was one or two, but they... Mm -hmm. uh, what was the name of that the module installer? Well, uh, the first one that I remember was Proto. It was called Pro Proto. How do I pronounce this? Yeah, Proto, I think, yeah. Proto, yeah. From prototyping, yeah. I think, I'm not sure. But yeah, 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 something like this. And uh, when I joined the Pro 6 community, it wasn't working already. Was. Uh, so I wrote this thing I called initially Proto Minus. Mm. It was really simple. It was like 20 or 30 lines of code. It just cloned code of GitHub, generated a make file using an external tool, and run make, make install. And it was later renamed to Neutro, like, like a pun with Proto and Neutro. Mm -hmm. And yeah, this sort of started evolving. It was probably, I think it were uh, more widely used than Panda is now. Panda is the new model installer. Because neutral started expanding, expanding, the features were added, more and more features, and it was still this hundred something line long script, which was completely unmaintainable, untestable. Is that written in Perl 5 or Perl 6? No, or Perl 6 from the start. So it's everything in Perl 6, the, the, the module installer. Okay. Well, at first it was almost only running Git as an external program and then Make as an external program. It was like not, not much Perl 6 in there, but. Now it's a lot logic, the module pre-compilation is pure Perl 6, testing is almost pure Perl 6, it's still using Perl 5 proof right now, but it's on the way to be self-sustainable of some sort. Okay. Yeah, almost working, test harness for Perl 6, written in Perl 6. So. That's nice. Yeah. Okay, so that's that's one of the areas you're, you're working on. Is there other places that you get involved in, in Perl 6? Well, I'm, I'm doing less uh, compiler development these days, almost none of it recently. I'm mostly working on module ecosystem, module smoke testing, so writing some models themselves. Oh, well, also, bylaw is a nice, nice thing to talk about. I started uh, writing a port of Perl Dancer to Perl 6, and yeah. called it Bylaw, yeah, like Spanish for Dancer, because I started prototyping it on a piece of paper during my Spanish classes. Oh. And, <laughs> yeah. And I think it's the most mature, let's say, web framework for Perl 6 right now. Even though it's not mature, but yeah. It's is it usable? <laughs> I think so, yes. I've written oh. things through. It's mostly as demonstrations. I don't think that there is any website running on it right now. 
Oh, that's well, what I wanted to know if if you can if there is anything that that's currently. No, I don't think so. Maybe there's something. I, I always have this feeling that it's entirely possible that some of the code I published onto the world is used right now by someone that I don't know. But no, I don't think it's reused anywhere. It's still very slow to use in a production environment. Mm -hmm. Well, a mm -hmm. slow production, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that could be possible, yeah. I mean, we lived with uh, lots, lots lower things, uh, I don't know, 10, 10, 15 years ago. So if there is a site that doesn't need a, that doesn't have a lot of interaction, then, then probably it can. I mean, I know I built something that, that was not using this, just generating uh, HTML files. So yeah, that's fine. fine. I think there are, uh, some people have blogs uh, which are running on Perl 6 because Perl 6 is just generating static HTML yeah. files. This is fast enough, then, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for that, yeah, it's okay. To, you, you run it on the offline, basically. Right. Um, good. Um, there is going to be a workshop in Poland, right? Yes. I was being nagged about this for, I think, at least a year now. Every time I was going somewhere, someone was saying, hey, you should totally do a Polish per workshop. Right. Everywhere in Norway, in France, they would say, yeah, let's do a Polish per workshop. And mm -hmm. I thought, yeah, well, but the thing is that I didn't think that anybody would really come there because our Warsaw per mongers group is like three or four active members. Mm -hmm. That's the amount of people that usually comes to meetings. And I, I didn't really think that anyone would come to this, but we started thinking about this more and more and thought this was maybe worth a try. So, yep, uh, we have a workshop on 25th and 26th of May this year, so in less than a month now. And we have about 30 people registered. Oh, so that's nice. That's nice. Yeah. It's bigger than some of the other workshops. Sorry? That's bigger than some of the other workshops I, I visited. Yes, yes, it is. Well, I don't know how many of people of those people will actually come, because we have like 17, I think, at this moment, confirmed users. Mm -hmm and about 12 speakers or something. Okay. We have some really nice agenda. We have Brian Defoy coming, giving a talk. Mm, John Brian. coming, talking about Rakuda on JVM. So it looks really nice so far. Okay. So these are uh, the guests from overseas, Brian Foy and mm, Jonathan? John well, yeah, it's, yeah, he's technically overseas because he's coming from Sweden, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, so we have I have we may have more attendees from abroad than from Poland itself. That was one of the reasons why we picked two days for workshop because yeah. we think that there's still, we, I personally have this feeling that there is not really much Perl 5 per, per programmers in Poland at all. So okay. if we did the Polish exclusive workshop, it would probably be very empty. And uh, I thought we will have to depend on speakers and attendees from abroad and as it turned out, the entire event will probably be in English because there is not a single talk given in Polish. Oh, everything is in English? Yes, even oh, from speakers. So it will okay. be really special. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's good if you make it uh, international so other people can come and that they feel more comfortable. Yep. And um, mm -hmm. that's great. Uh, so what else is on the agenda besides... Brian Foy and uh, Jonathan. Oh, well, uh, let me remember. I, I, I asked something, guys. If someone is watching this, this uh, interview, why mm. should the, he or she come to the workshop? Oh, because we will have the most awesome t-shirts that ever existed on a Perl conference. Okay. Exactly. I've never seen anything like this. I will not yet reveal what it is, but this will be the best t-shirts you've ever seen. I guarantee you. There have been no t-shirts like this in any workshop I've seen before, so this is one of the reasons. Okay, uh, so for the sheet t-shirt, yeah, good. The t-shirt is, the, no, it's not the main reason, of course, but, uh, well, the schedule is, well, not the schedule, but the list of talks is already online on the conference website, so you can look it up. Okay. We can actually take a look at this right now, if you want. Let's, let me see if you have some ideas, but, but later on we can link there and then people can... Yeah, sure. That. We have actually very, very... Um, a lots of talk submissions. Mm -hmm. We were wondering if well, the initial plan was to have one day full of talks and another day filled with hackathons, classes, and all those things. But we had so many talk submissions that we have we had to like choose about half of them, and it's still more than five hours of talks. So yeah, we had a lot of submissions, and we decided to have both days filled with talks and not because well, I have a feeling that. 
anytime there's a hackathon on the workshop or on the Yapsi, it's mostly people from, like, if you do a Perl 6 hackathon, there's almost nobody from outside the Perl 6 community joining. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, well, so I, we wanted to have something that we really engage all the attendees and not just a group of people that's really... How do you, how do you try... Mm -hmm. Sorry. Go yeah, yeah, go. So no, how did you try to um, how do you try to reach out to reach more people? Mm -hmm. So uh, we have a partnership with Per Weekly, and Per Weekly appeared on yeah. well, uh, Polish Per Workshop appeared on Per Weekly, and we had feedback from uh, Per programmers that it, this is the way how they found us. Oh, that's and good. We advertised uh, to other Polish or Per Mongers groups. So there's one in Krakow and one in Poznan. Uh, and one of them is inactive for like four years, I think. And the other has a 404 error on their web page, but we still send the emails and some of the people registered, so apparently somebody's still listening. Okay. We have some corporate attendees from Pearl shops in Poland. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've, I've done some direct advertisements myself. I mean, asking all of my, almost all of my uh, friends from the Pearl community if they want to go to the, come to the Polish Pearl Workshop, and most of them registered. So, this have is you tried uh, the local Python mongers or whatever they are? I called some of the people, and there was a plan to uh, reach out to them to send an email to their user groups to Warsaw Hackerspace once we've had agenda online. So I think it's about time to do this. Maybe we should try that. Yeah, and local, and uh, I know, don't know Linux user groups and yeah, yeah, great. Mm -hmm. Um, so, thank you for the for for your time. Thank you for the interview. I wonder if you have something like I don't know, want to let people maybe know how they can get involved in Pro Six or some mm -hmm. other ideas that you. Well, uh, the easiest thing, easiest way to involve in Pro Six is just to join an IRC channel because it's probably the friendliest IRC channel I've ever seen. There is always someone to answer, to help, to. If you ask what can I do, how can I contribute, there will always be there will always be an answer. There will always be something to do, and there are a lot of rough edges. Uh, there is lots of things that to uh, lots of ways that one can contribute to Pro Six. Okay, if someone is not not familiar with IRC, okay, first thing, learn how to use IRC, but. Well, <laughs> is there another way to to get involved, to get in touch some, with someone? The all, all the code that is written for Pro Six is mostly on GitHub, and we have the Pro Six ecosystem repo, and there is a wiki inside which shows a list of most wanted modules for Pro Six. So if if you wanted to write a module and don't know what which one to choose, there is a list there. Okay. Uh, you can just look through the existing modules and see if your favorite one is missing, maybe. Uh, mailing lists, you can always ask on a mailing list. Uh, there are relatively low traffic, but there's always someone to answer. And today, actually, there will be an IRC hackathon. Well, this is IRC again, so <laughs> it's not the case, but uh, yeah, I think it's mostly mailing lists and the IRC. Great. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you too. And um, are you going to so one of the APSIs this year? Well, I'll definitely be on the APSI Europe this year. Yeah, and I'll I'm be coming uh, to the first day and the hackathon before on the APSI in North America. Oh, but great. So let's see there. It's true yet because I still have to arrange visas and all this stuff, but if it's possible, and I hope it will be possible, I'll probably be there too. On okay. And so hopefully, so hopefully I'll see you there. Yep, same here. Okay. Bye, bye bye. So this was uh, Tajik. Yes. Uh, on the Pearl Maven show, my name is Gabor Sabo. Goodbye. Goodbye.